Put the microphone closer to him. How is it now? So the issue I'm going to explore this morning is the world of democracy in Israel. And I would like to explore different conceptions of different interpretations regarding the current mode of democracy in Israel, and then to explore alternative future modes for democracy which are widely passed by different social groups in Israel, and to do it through the development of several scenarios. You have just mentioned the world that we are trying to do about the world. So I would like to draw some scenarios concerning the future of the Jewish state and democracy in the Jewish state. And I would like to start with the question, why different modes of between Jewish and democratic state, and the different concepts today reflect different interpretations concerning the balance between the Jewish state and the democratic state. Some interpretations elevate the Jewish over the democratic, others the democratic over the Jewish, and there is still a search for a pragmatic balance between the two. And if you look at the uh, basic laws that were enacted in 1992, we can, say that the, we can see that the purpose of the basic law was to establish a basic law, to establish a basic law for <coughs> the state of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state. And the question is, how can we do that? And here is the major debate. It says either Jewish or democratic. It cannot be both. If it is Jewish, it cannot be democratic. This is a cultural divide within Israel between Orthodox and non-Orthodox Jews. Because the Orthodox claims that authority lies with religious law. And this is obviously the cultural division within the Jewish community. But then we have a division, a national division in Israel between Jews and Arabs. And the Arabs claim that it is democratic. It cannot be Jewish because the state must be neutral towards any affiliation, whether religious or national. So nationalism has to do with recognition of a particularistic group. Democracy has to do with universalism, being blind, turning a blind, uh, turning a blind eye towards any affiliation, any national affiliation. And this is a national division that we have in Israel. I would like to expand on this and say, that the more Israel tries to be inclusive in terms of cultural belonging, to allow in different Jewish groups, the more it becomes exclusionary towards the Arabs. Just think about different Jewish groups. Now we discover a Jewish group in Zimbabwe. And tomorrow we will allow them getting in. And then the Arabs would say, listen, you allow those people to share almost nothing with we are the Arabs of Israel, we speak the same language, we live in the same country, we have the same emotions about the country, why do you exclude us? And this is a problem that we have between in cultural inclusion and national exclusion. There are obviously some other challenges to democracy in Israel, the occupation of the West Bank, the growing social divide and gaps in terms of gender and so social groups the exposure to global north market and exclusion of their <coughs> citizens, lack of transparency and accountability in the country. But in my view, although the issue of the West Bank is extremely complicated, it can be decided. It is a political decision. When we go back to the cultural divide and the national divide within Israel, it's an internal problem. It would be extremely difficult to solve this problem. So I want you to think about the different aspects of democracy, and you have to take into consideration the fact that when the Freedom House classified the different countries of the world, Israel is classified as a free country, and in terms of political rights, it rates very high. The score is one. In terms of civil liberties, it's two. So we are in the neighborhood of Japan and Greece, which has similar ranks. The situation in the Orthodox 
occupied territory is obviously different. Different to the events, section 6, level 3. The situation of the Palestinian National Authority is different. And the neighborhood is different if you look at the ranks of Egypt, Jordan, or Lebanon. I would like to start my exploration with two definitions. One the definition of democracy and the other the definition of the Jewish state. So when we look at democracy, I think it rests on two major pillars. One has to do with majority rule and the other with the rule of values. Majority rule actually relates to the issue of the nature of government, while the rule of values relates to the nature of the state. So when we think, think about the nature of the government, the character of the government, it has to do with freedom of elections, <coughs> governance by representatives, critics coming from the rest of the representatives. And this is the idea of a majority rule, the right to elect.
bridge between representatives of the secular majority and the orthodox minority. It gives preference to national unity and political stability, starting with the rule and the idea of the status quo. And the majority in this approach evinces a willingness to self restrain and take account of orthodox religious interests. <coughs> the principles have to do with proportional allocation of positions, autonomy, political participation, and maintenance of the status quo. The third approach is ethnic democracy. Professor Stavis is a prominent representative of this approach. This is a song, it's hard to tell, but it's a song of a descriptive and normative mode regarding the relations between the Jewish majority and the Arab minority, and it gives preference to defending the nation state by assuming various measures of control with regard to the Arab population. And the reason for this has to do with the ongoing threat posed by the Arabs according to the to the state of Israel. So the criticism of the three approaches it says that there is infringement of basic human rights in the sphere of religion, of pro-religion and of religion. And there is a criticism of the exclusion of the Arab sector by not treating the Arabs as equal, there is a political exclusion, an equal allocation of resources, failing to recognize Arab culture, and soci growing socioeconomic equality. Given this criticism, here we have the fourth approach, which says that Israel is a nationalized state, that has a technocratic government, there is an overt deprivation of the Arab minority, discrimination in terms of the land regime, Restrictions which are imposed on the development of Arab culture and education, including the dominant language, and that's to recognize the Arab in a position. And here we get into this struggle, that I call it the struggle over the democratic narrative in Israel, with a different interpretation. And the question is, where are we heading? Given the fact that we have different interpretations in Israeli society, different sets of values, where are we going? So we have four different orientations of civic society, liberal democracy, binational state, homogeneous nation state, and democratic nation state. And what I would like to do with your permission is to jump, since I have only one minute, to jump to the end of my presentation and to say this. What I've tried to do is to present four current modes and four current <coughs> If we look, if we try to map them out against this diagram of nationalism, going from high to low, and democracy going from low to high, we can see that nationalizing state is here, ethnic democracy, Jewish democratic state, and then the idea of multicultural state is right here, and we have the idea of homogeneous and binational state here, and civic state here, and then the question is, where are we going in the future? And all you can say is that we can think about three different contradicting, contradicting patterns, three different scenarios. One scenario is moving from nationalizing ethnic democracy, and again, then it goes to Jewish democratic states and ends up in a civic state, a state of foreign citizens, which is the end of a Jewish state. The second approach goes from nationalizing ethnic democracy, Jewish democracy, and ends up in a binational state or in homogeneous nation state. It may cater to the needs of Avigdor Lieberman, a homogeneous nation state, or to the needs of Arab groups of binational states. Both groups share the idea that by strengthening the national presence in Israel, and they do it in different ways, they reach democracy. And the third approach is an approach that takes the middle way. It goes in this direction, but it doesn't go up, it doesn't go down, it remains here and it ends up with a multicultural state. A state where we have a Jewish state in the sense that I've mentioned, the right of self-determination, defense of democracy, but at the same time, it recognizes minority rights and allows different groups, whether religious or national, to have their own life with positive and negative.